This is what a deer sounds like. We can't understand that, so that's why we use other methods to understand the species. To answer our questions about wildlife, biologists are relying more and more on technology to more precisely answer our biggest questions. Going into the field and physically observing deer, that means watching them with our eyes on the landscape, has helped us answer questions in the past, but technology, like a satellite link GPS collar on an animal, helps us discover new information with a level of detail that we couldn't gather through physical observation alone. There are always more questions we can ask. And as any three-year-old can attest, it's important to know why. Collars allow us to continuously get data without additional human presence that could disturb the deer and potentially affect our ability to understand their natural behavior. We collar a variety of wildlife, from grizzly bears to pronghorn. Wildlife collars tell the stories of what species need to thrive. The collars might remind you of a fitness watch that people wear to track their steps, but with one obvious difference, its size. The size of the collar is primarily due to a larger battery that lasts longer and minimizes the number of times we need to capture the deer. You may charge your fitness watch's battery every night. The battery in the GPS collar typically needs to last over a year. At 1-2 to two pounds for the average weight of a satellite GPS collar, the collar for the deer could be compared to you carrying a 32 ounce water bottle on a hike. The collars are designed to fit snugly so they don't shift or get caught on anything as the animal moves throughout its day. Depending on the collar, they either expand, fall off after the animal reaches a certain size, or are programmed to fall off just before the battery dies, so we can replace the battery and use the collar on another animal. GPS collars played a key role in showing just how far mule deer travel seasonally or migrate in western Wyoming. We could see that the deer were migrating, but we still had more questions. Collars helped us understand that the sublet mule deer herd migrates nearly 160 miles and the route is fairly defined year after year. Data from GPS collars illustrates the most effective places to install wildlife friendly fencing, build wildlife overpasses, and make other enhancements to make it easier for deer to complete their annual migration. Recently, in the Deer and Elk Ecological Research, or DEER project with the Wyoming Co-op Unit, deer and elk were captured and collared to begin a study to look at both deer populations and the elk populations in one system, and to be able to understand the dynamics at play between those two large herbivores. The study will help us learn more about competition and predation between deer and elk in southwest Wyoming. After the animals are captured, we weigh them, take a blood sample, take a tooth sample to get an exact age, record body measurements, and use ultrasound to assess nutritional condition. While it's still too early in the study to make any final conclusions, one thing is certain. The level of detail we're able to see after analyzing the GPS collar data shows population level trends with a level of precision unavailable through other methods. As technology develops, we're able to gather new information to help us understand and assist wildlife in ways that were previously not possible. The next time you see a collared deer, know that it's a small piece of the bigger picture biologists analyze, helping us discover answers to important questions about wildlife populations.